thank you guys for for leading us um, continuing every week to take us to the foot of the cross I love that um, well I want to say good morning and uh, glad that y'all are here I know we got a good bit that are away on fall break we are the chosen ones who do not get vacation uh, so it's good that good that y'all are here good that y'all are here well we're gonna um, we're gonna go right in just pray for our kids and send them and uh, Adults, those who are standing here, we're going to get our morning um, started. I'll kind of give a little bit of uh, explanation, but we're going to send our kids, and kids, I'll send you out with this. In exactly three months, it will be Christmas Eve, okay? <laughs> Just come on. Come on. So how about we pray for our kids? Y'all can pray for me as well. All right. Let's pray for our kids. If you, uh, they're close. Let's get an arm around them. Um, let them know that we love them. We'll pray for them and, and uh, send them on. God, thank you for... Uh, who you are. Thank you, um, God, that you are our God, and you are greater, and you are stronger than anything we might be walking through. Uh, Any feelings, emotions that we have, you are greater than any circumstance. Um, You are greater than us, and we need that. Um, So, God, we just, um, we pray your presence would just be upon us in, in this room and in the rooms of uh, the kids that, uh, that they'll be learning this morning, open in scripture. God, we just pray that you would be with them. And Father, we lift up uh, these kids. God, we pray that you would continue to protect them and protect their hearts. We, would pray, that, we pray that they uh, would see you um, in the midst of uh, just everything that is going on. We pray that their eyes would stay focused on you. We pray that they would know that you are their God, that you are greater, and that you are stronger and they would see that constantly. God, we love you. Um, Thanks for uh, these kids. Thanks for the teachers, those who are leading them this morning. And uh, we just pray, uh, God, that we need your presence. We need you more than anything else today and every day and from here on out. God, we love you. Um, Be with these kids. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, uh, elementary school kids, y'all can head this way. Middle school kids out this door. Can't call middle school kids. Let's give them a hand. Give them a hand. There they go. Love that. Love that. Well, um, I want to uh, read a couple passages of scripture for us uh, this morning before we continue. I know on a morning like this, um, we come here in a lot of different places. Um, I know that as uh, my wife and I have been talking and uh, working through uh, a lot of things, um, we've been all over the place just in our emotions and things that we're feeling heartbroken, confused, uh, saddened, um, all of these things. And my wife is probably laughing because rarely do I show emotion, but in this season, uh, there has been um, a lot. And, um, but then we go, we go to hopeful, and then we go right back to heartbroken in the midst of everything. And so um, in the midst of that, I want to read this passage of Scripture. It's kind of one that I've leaned on um, in this season. I love this. I want to give you all two, but this is the first one. I'll put it on the screen, and Um, You can kind of follow along. This is um, NLT. My students hate me because most of the time they buy an NIV Bible, and then uh, on Wednesday nights I always read from the NLT, and everybody just gets confused. But I'm going to go NLT and confuse everybody again this morning. But um, Psalm 139, uh, which is um, a psalm that we know probably very well, 1 through 12 says this. And i got to tell you, like when we read Psalm 139, I think a lot of times we get to that part where it says, I am fearfully and wonderfully made, and we love that part. You know, like we embrace the I am fearfully and wonderfully made because it's talking about us and who we are. Um, But I want to read this first part and uh, just David's confession of God's presence. Um, I believe it's true of us here this morning. It says this, O Lord, you have examined my heart, and you know everything about me. You know when I sit down or stand up, You know my thoughts even when I'm far away. You see me when I travel and when I rest at home. You know everything I do. You know what I'm going to say even before I say it, Lord. You go before me and follow me. You place your hand of blessing on my head. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is too great for me to understand. And I can never escape from your spirit. I can never get away from your presence. If I go up to heaven, you are there. If I go down to the grave, you are there. If I ride the wings of the morning, if I dwell by the farthest ocean, even there your hand will guide me and your strength will support me. 
I could ask the darkness to hide me and the light around me to become night, but even in darkness, I cannot hide from you. To you, the night shines as bright as day. Darkness and light are the same to you. 11 verse 7, it says, I can never escape from your spirit. I can never get away from your presence. And this is good news for us today. This is good news for us. In moments where David felt like God was absent and he just wanted to run, the presence of God was inescapable. That is good news. That is good news. I'm confident the same is true for us. So this morning, um, it's going to look a little different. Um, Staff and elders, um, and I think all of our faith family would agree, um, we believe we just need a time of worship and prayer this morning um, to recenter our hearts, um, to refocus our minds and what he's got for us, um, to allow us to dig into the hope that we believe uh, that he has for this faith family. Matthew 6, um, 9 through 10 says this, um, and my wife reminded me of this um, yesterday, Um, and it just gives us a simple outline to follow as we pray, and I know this is probably one of those passages we memorized um, maybe when we were really, really young, and we have recited maybe many of times, Um, and I don't even want us to focus on the whole thing. I want us to take uh, advice from the first um, two verses of the Lord's Prayer. Um, Matthew 6, 9 through 10 Jesus says, when you pray, pray like this. So he doesn't necessarily pray these exact words, but he gives us an outline, essentially, of what we pray. And the the first part is very, very important before we get down to the rest of it, but the first part is very important. And he says, says this, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. And I made that hallowed really big because I think sometimes we say that, we don't fully really understand or get that part. It is to ask uh, God to allow his name and his name alone to be worshipped, exalted, honored, and adored. Hallowed be your name. Jesus, you alone, Father in heaven, God, would you and your name alone be the one thing that we run to, be the one thing that we worship, the one thing that we lift up. So when you pray, pray like this, Father in heaven, your name be glorified your name be worshiped, your name be adored. And then he says this, your kingdom come and your will be done. I don't know about you guys, but do you pray this often? Like, do you pray this way often? Your kingdom come and your will be done. I know that in mornings where I, like, this can leave me so quick. I could pray this in the morning. Your kingdom come, your will be done. God, your kingdom and your will today, and that's it. And midday, I could go right back to, uh, maybe my kingdom and, and maybe my will <laughs> today. And it, it can leave us so fast. So your kingdom come, your will be done. So I want us to remember this, and we're going to take a couple minutes um, to pray this morning. Um, and I want us to pray like this. I want us to pray, our Father in heaven, Your name and your name alone be glorified in this place. And God, your kingdom come and your will be done. And what's beautiful is the rest of it talks about these things for us. Forgive us. Forgive those uh, who have wronged us. And so it goes into us, but the very first part and the way that we start always is glory to him and focus on him. So here's what we're going to do uh, this morning. Um, We're going to take just a couple minutes, three or four minutes, and we're going to spend some time in prayer before we move back into worship. Um, Here, I actually ask our students to do this on Wednesday nights. A lot of time we have a couple of high school and a couple of middle school group up, spend some time in prayer, walking through the scriptures. Um, And it has become less awkward uh, for them the first time we did it, super awkward. Um, but the more that we do it, the less uh, awkward it becomes. And so um, I'm going to invite you guys this morning. Maybe if uh, you and um, spouse, maybe y'all need to spend some time in prayer together, and I understand that. But if there's a couple around you that maybe you could group up um, with them, again, awkwardness, I get it. But if you could group up with them 
and just circle up and spend some time with prayer. So we have just these pockets of um, people and families praying together. I think that that would be beautiful. And here's how we're going to start. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. Let's pray like this. Let's pray like this. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to encourage you with this. Sometimes this can be hard um, because God invites us to present our request to him. Um, but sometimes, uh, sometimes we don't need to do that. <laughs> and so this morning, I'm going to encourage you, no requests, no requests, just Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done. And that's where we're going to start. So I'm going to invite you guys just to move if you want to or sit right where you are and spend a couple minutes in prayer. I'm going to give, give that to you this morning, and then Sonny's going to lead us, continue to lead us.
That is who you are All of my fears and anxieties Oh Lord, they fade away Stay Give him praise because he's so worthy of it. Hallelujah. That this church is made up of one body and is unified through Christ. That is the beauty of Jesus. That he can take wretched souls like us and put us at the center. So I was thinking about what to say. This is a new song that we're going to do. And I thought of this story about when me and my family first came to this church. Um, and when we first came to the church, I didn't know what to expect. We had visited about five other churches, and we were going crazy because we didn't find home. We didn't find that, that peace where we wanted. So I remember coming, and I saw this church, and I saw this round stage. And I was like, hmm, this is interesting. Pretty cool. Um, so I remember as one of the Chamley girls, uh, probably Sydney, I believe, was, was leading. And me, I'm one, when I hear music, when I hear a tone, I'm immediately like, oh, who's that? Um, and I couldn't see because it was really crowded. And I'm Puerto Rican and I'm five feet. And, um, and so somebody was standing in front of me. I really couldn't see. And I'm like, man, where is, who is singing this? And then finally, it just, like, it clicked in one second. And it was like, oh, wait a minute. We're doing this together. This is so cool. And so while that one tone caught me, I was more in awe of the corporate worship that we kind of experienced in that. And that was my experience, our first experience in sanctuary. It was about six years ago. Um, and so now, fast forwarding, I, I was scrolling through uh, Instagram a couple weeks ago, and I ran across this song, um, and it's called More Like Jesus. And when I was listening to the lyrics, I shared it with my wife. I was like, man, this is what the church needs, that we bring everything to the center. I understand there's a grieving process I understand that there's hurting in this room. There's transition, and that's uncomfortable. But the goodness of God, I kind of, I'm kind of excited to see what God's going to do. I'm kind of excited to see what God's going to do because I'm the type of individual that went through hell in my life, and I saw God break through so many barriers, and he's still doing it today. So I, I cling on today the authority and the goodness of, of his works that no man can shut down. And so this, this chorus goes like this. The men always kind of get nervous, and I don't want you to get nervous. I want this time to be free. I want, as you're reading these lyrics, to be pierced and God to just be evident in this room. So the hook, the hook is a little like this. It goes... Holy Spirit, make me more like Jesus Every day a little more like Jesus Crucify my flesh with yours That my new life might be secure Everything I do Done so I can honor you Resurrect me, sanctify Make me into your image you only get one time, but we're going to do this together. Come on. I've been told to live my own truth. Do whatever makes me feel good. Get rid of boundaries. The rules are stifling. Chase good feeling, soon we'll be gone. But I found myself more lost than ever, asleep and bound to my desires. And 
that's not freedom. Holy Spirit, make me more like Jesus. Every day a little more like Jesus. Crucify my flesh with yours. The mind of life might be secured. Everything I do, done so I can honor you. Resurrect me, sanctify me. change coming more of you and less of me transformation by your spirit in me now that I know you I know there's no one else for me cause you're the one that my soul loves now I found myself more alive than ever my life lay down for your desire. Now this is freedom. Holy Spirit, make me more like Jesus. Every day a little more like Jesus. Crucify my flesh with yours. That my new life might be secured. Everything I do, done so I can honor you. Resurrect me, sanctify, make me into your image. Oh, yeah. Praise me to God, praise me to God. You save me from myself. Praise me to God, praise me to God. I've been dealt I'll never look back No, I can't go back I'm yours oh. No, I never look back No, I can't go back I'm yours Praise be to God Praise be to God You saved me From myself From myself A new life I've been dealt place where he took you from. Honor you, where's your 
like you, Lord. How we saved a wretch like us, renewed and restored. May we continue to be encouraged and know that the authority is his. It's all his. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Like Troy said, we want this uh, morning to be about worship and prayer. I know a lot of us have questions. And a lot of us have hurt, probably a little anger and a little frustration. And in two weeks, when everybody's back from fall break, that afternoon, we're going to have a time where we can answer questions. We could talk about where we are and how we got there. And more importantly, we could talk about where we're going. But for this morning, we really want this to be about worship and prayer and asking God for his help to lead us. And we're going to ask God for his help to lead us as we try to be transformed by the gospel to live and love like Jesus. Um, in a couple of minutes, I'm going to do exactly what Troy did. I'm going to sit down. I'm going to ask you all to, to pray again. Um, and I'm going to ask you specifically to pray that God will lead us as a church. So we can try to figure out everything on our own. We can try really hard. We can do our best. Or we can ask God for what he would have for us and ask him to show us the way. And we can ask him to lead us in what that way would be. That way might be hard. That might, way might be things that we can't imagine or we can't even see right now. Maybe that way is going to be a little bit painful. Nevertheless, I'm going to ask us, to ask Jesus to lead us. And to be led, we need to pray and we need to listen. And I wrote this before, uh, before Troy got up and talked this morning. I said, uh, maybe we can pray that prayer like Jesus prayer, prayed where he said, uh, your kingdom come, your will be done. Uh, in January, my therapist suggested that I spend two or three minutes a day praying the Lord's Prayer out loud. So I remember the first day I did it, I sat in my chair, and he said, put your phone away, quiet, no music, no nothing. And uh, I did it, and I said, uh, Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, uh, your kingdom come, your will be done. And then I remember my next words, excuse me, were crap. Uh, your will be done, your kingdom come is the worst thing for me because truthfully I want my will to be done. I want my kingdom to come. I want to follow God as long as it's comfortable. I want to follow God as long as it's easy. So I have prayed that prayer over and over this year for the last eight, nine months and I still get stuck on what I call line two of the Lord's prayer where it's your will be done and your kingdom come. And I think we probably all need that right now, starting with me. So I'm going to start in just a minute, and I'm going to pray, and uh, I'd like for all of us to pray. And like Troy said, you can circle up. You can sit by yourself and pray if you want to. Uh, you can sit in your seat. You can kneel on the floor. You can move over into the corner, wherever you want to go. As Sonny is apt to say, make yourself at home here. So let's pray. Lord, we need you. I need you. Our church needs you. Would you not come down and show us your way? My voice has overshadowed your whisper. Our voices have overshadowed yours. Lord Jesus, could I become someone who wants to go where you lead me more than I want to get my own way? Lord Jesus, could we become a place where we, what we want is less important than where you, we, you lead us? We do not always realize that we need you, but I think we do know that right now, and it's not easy for us to really let your kingdom come and let your will be done. 
I want my will and my way, and it's really hard to let go of that for something bigger than me. Forgive me for that, Lord Jesus. Right now, we ask for some listening, and we ask for some hearing, and then the strength to follow. Please, Jesus. Search me, O oh God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxious thoughts. And see if there is any hurtful way in me. And lead me in the everlasting way. Search me.
time singing. Search me, oh God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxious thoughts. And see if there is an hurtful way in me. And lead me in the everlasting to think about something for a minute it's um it's how do we how do we trust in a time like this i think if you look back and forth there's you know you go i'll trust that person i trust i'll i'll throw that i'll trust that person further i can throw them you know <laughs> you know it's true it's true most important thing is how do we trust god in all of this that's that's a place that we have to wrestle with you know and we know each other in this room we've been most of us have been together for a long long time and we've been journeying together for a long time I was um, sitting on the front porch Friday with my wife Becky and we were talking about trust and our journey in trust and um, y'all know uh, Bethany and Andrew are our kids, most of you do, and uh, there for about a good decade or more, um, you know, both both of them were like off just doing their thing, and it was a hard time. Um, many nights you'd sit there in the living room, you'd hear a siren go by, and it's like, man, I hope that's not them. It's true. Hope that's not. Hope that's not for one of them. Um. And you figure out, like, man, uh, I don't, I don't know where you are in this, Father. Where are you in this? And it's hard. But you watch God work in the craziest of ways in their lives, and in our lives, we're seeing it. And it's like, you know, we had to come to the end of holding on to something and really turning loose of it and that's when God really started being God for us now I've known Jesus I've I've known Jesus now for 52 years and it was I was even though you know he wanted to be the Lord boss master controller owner ruler he wanted to be all that in my life and I did give my life to him and it's a little different when it comes to your kids it's a little different and there was a different place of trust that God wanted to take us and he did and for us we were able to see both of our kids really come to know Jesus really follow him and not only that but just help others 
find him too, to get to know him, to get off the streets, to see their lives turned around in a relationship with him. It's an amazing thing. And of course, in that, man, our trust just soared in that. We find ourselves in this church in a hard place. It's hard. And we're going, what in the world? How do, how do, we, how do we walk through this? How do we allow Jesus to be Jesus in this whole thing? And he calls us to this place of like, you know, this did not catch me by surprise. Just in the same way I've known each of you before the foundation of the world, right? I've known you. I've known about this. I've provided everything that you need for this. But I know that there's things that in me, Jesus is showing me. Uh, you know, Troy, that scripture, search me, O oh God. And it's like, man, the Lord kind of told me a little while back that you, gotta, you need to live right here for you you know, for me. <laughs> and so that's where I find myself today, just living right there in it. And I think we all have to, you know, whether online or in this room, um, we have to kind of look at some of the stuff that's going on right now. And I have to say that uh, I know the elders would say this, our staff would say this, and many of us would say, we really hadn't negotiated and walked through this thing exactly perfect. And sometimes there's comments that are made, it's not exactly perfect. It's hard. And one of the things that I think Jesus allows to happen in this is that, you know, in the word where it talks about the precious metals, how he heats it up, and and it gets hot and what rises to the surface anybody dross 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 rises to the surface in in these times when that happens i believe and y'all have heard me say this i'm kind of like a little bit of a broken record jesus is returning soon who is he returning for he's returning for a spotless bride now, there's a process that happens in that for all of us as the bride of Christ, right? And guys, we're in the middle of that process right now. He is allowing us through this to see, and I know in me it's just like, man, I didn't think that was there. I, I didn't think that was there. Can I get an amen? Any, I'm telling you, I'm raising my hand first. It's like, uh, yeah. And I think for all of us, and it's kind of like being in the stage of grief, right? We find ourselves in that, and there's all these different stages we go through. God's walking us through and allowing these things to surface so that he is able to scrape that off. So, once again, there's more of a pure thing going on for us. And I would just invite us, no matter where you find yourself today, and I know there's a lot of people that are, thinking this way and you're thinking that way and there's one faith there's one baptism I mean, what does it talk about one right one I'll say this too the Bible says that they will know that we are Christians by the love that we have one for another ouch that's one of the things that he wants to do in us he does and we're all in a process. We're all in a journey as we go through this. And so I think in the same way that I've seen in my life, there's, there's ways that God just shows himself so true and so powerful. You know, I grow in my trust in him, in my faith in him. And he's doing that work right here, right now. But one of the things that I think that he would have us to do is to repent. We don't talk about the word very much, but we're going one direction, and it's like he wants us to turn from whatever it is for us, you know, my thoughts, whatever it is. He wants us to turn to him. 
he wants us. There's a lot of times, of course, if we don't know Jesus, he wants us to turn from those ways. He wants to, to turn us from turning to being our own God and allowing him to be God Almighty. As believers, there's also times we have to repent. We turn, and we turn to Jesus. We've got places around the room where there's communion. I don't want us to take that right now. I want us to really think through if there's anybody that we need to talk to right now that God might be saying, I, I got a little something I need to talk with you about. I would just invite that in spirit of love. Let me, let me read this. I've got to get this right. Evidently, Paul went through some of this. If, if, you read, if you read the word, bless him, every time he planted a church, I mean, fur was flying. It was just like, what? You know, can I not just get something going here and it be okay? Man, everywhere, everything that he started doing. And why? Because the enemy wants to sow discord. He wants to sow those things in that would disrupt right so here's what it says let your conversation always be full of grace seasoned with salt so that you may know how to answer everyone okay Colossians 4 6 man is our speech is our conversations is what we're writing full of grace and seasoned with salt. Man. That the world would know that we love Jesus and we love one another. That's what he's looking for. He's looking for it in my heart. I'm not saying anything that I hadn't said to me in this whole process and man I love you guys and I know y'all love me too but I just want to say this if there's something that you're feeling towards me that we need to talk about come see me it's fine I, I would love for us to reason together to talk together and to pray together if I'm playing guitar and you need to call, if you need to talk to me, like right now, I'll put it down and we'll talk. I'm glad to do that. Because this is that important. If Jesus is going to use this place, if we're going to learn to trust him and each other, it's that big a deal that we get things right with one another. And learn to walk in him, learn to trust in him. And I don't care how old we are maybe in the faith. God calls us to these things. He calls us to these places where this is what we need to do. So I just want to invite us right now. I'm just going to be here. And then we're going we're gonna to do a couple more songs in a couple more minutes. But if you, if you do take, you, listen, you may be totally cool in your heart. Man, praise, praise Jesus. And I'm not saying everybody here is like, messed up I imagine a lot of us are but I'm just saying take the time take the time to be before him before you take communion it's a big deal because when we take communion what are we doing we're remembering what he has done for us one of the most holy things that we could do is take and eat and drink because of what Jesus has done remembering the sacrifice that he made for us and it's very clear in Scripture. He says he wants us to be right as we partake. And listen, if you just need to circle up and pray again about something else or for somebody, you know, lifting up Craig and Christy, that they're going to hear things that Jesus wants them to know. And, I mean, there's a bunch of us that we need to be lifting up and praying for. You know, we need it. So let's just take a little bit more time and do that. We have time. We have time and we can do that. Amen. So Father,
May our heart, may our ears be so sensitive to your spirit right now that we can easily hear what your spirit says to the church right now. Bring us to the place that we need to as we listen, as we talk together, as we pray to you, and as we remember what you've done for us.